I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. When the Nintendo Switch OLED was originally announced, I did not want it. I was not enthused. There were a lot of rumors that were pointing towards a Nintendo Switch Pro or a Super Switch or Nintendo Switch 2, whatever you wanna go ahead and call it, but this wasn't it. And when I saw that firsthand with my eyes, I was like, I like the appeal of an OLED screen, but is it worth the $350 asking price? I've had this console slash handheld for a year. The reason I got it was because my partner in crime over at the gaming resume got his hands on an OLED and I said, hey, why not? I'll go ahead and I'll get myself one as well. A year later, there's a lot of things that have changed. There's a lot of opinions that I had originally that might hold true, and there's some that have changed as well. And I wanna cover all of these things. Guys, if you like videos like this, like the video because likes are free after all, and it helps the channel a lot. And subscribe, that way you can go in and stay up to date. So when it comes to the Nintendo Switch OLED, the first thing that you notice is the screen. It's vibrancy, it's deep blacks, and everything that goes and ties into an OLED screen. Personally, I still think that screen holds strong. I do play a lot more handheld than I do in tabletop mode or docked onto the television. And frankly, I dig it. Honestly, I like being able to play handheld and just experience everything in its glory. All of the colors pop, especially in comparison to my day one OG Nintendo Switch, as well as the V2 Animal Crossing New Horizons Special Edition Switch that I have. That's not to say that there aren't any gripes. Obviously there's fears of burn-in. I know Wolfden has been kind of doing this continuous, hey, I'm gonna keep a stationary image and it's gonna burn into the Nintendo Switch OLED. And it works, honestly, It's the burn-in is there, so to speak but we're talking about crazy, like nobody's going to keep their Nintendo Switch on a stationary image that long. When it comes to day-to-day -day use, it feels right. I never really have too many issues in terms of vibrancy or brightness, especially when I'm playing midday. I live in Florida, so I don't really worry about taking out my Switch and playing it in broad daylight because my, the sun will literally cook the Nintendo Switch. But overall, the display is an upgrade from the day one OG Switch that I had. One of the first things that I did when I did an unboxing on twitch.tv slash the gaming resume was that I opened it up, popped in the Joy-Cons onto the console itself, and I commented about how sturdy it felt. And this is just, again, I was using an, a day one OG Nintendo Switch. Over time, things get loose and you're taking the Joy-Cons in and out. So it makes sense that the rail system in and of itself just has wear and tear. Turns out that I actually had a faulty rail on the left Joy-Con side, and I actually changed the entire thing just to go ahead and make sure that I can repair it and get it back up to par for my V1 Nintendo Switch. When it comes to the Switch OLED, a year out, a little bit of wear and tear has happened. Things are a little bit looser and overall that's okay. I understand that. Worst comes to worst, I can go ahead and get either new Joy-Cons or replace the rail system as we know. But I still think that it's a sturdy console and it just has a premium feel when it comes to the rails and the Joy-Cons clicking on in comparison to the V1 and V2 Nintendo Switch. One of the few gripes that I did have with the Nintendo Switch OLED was that the cartridge slot, in order to actually pop it open and put in your cartridge, it felt really, really tight and really, really tough just to kind of remove that and pop that open in comparison to the V1 and V2 Nintendo Switch. Now, after a year of using it, it still feels rougher. It still feels a little bit more sturdy in comparison to the V1 and V2. I've just simply gotten used to it and I know that I need to go ahead and click everything on and then kind of remove whatever I need to remove, so on and so forth. When it comes to the audio in and of itself, the audio sounds fine. I mean, I personally haven't experienced too much of a difference between the V1 and the V2 Nintendo Switch, especially going and comparing that to the Switch OLED. When it comes to the Switch OLED, there was supposed to be a premium or enhanced audio, at least that's what the trailer promised. I personally haven't experienced that. And when it comes to actually listening to the games that I'm playing, I typically play with headphones on just because I like being able to experience things in that fashion. For other people that use Bluetooth headsets, I personally have experienced a little bit of lag or a little desyncing whenever I'm playing a game. But overall, if you have a good headset, like you'll be fine. And if anything, you can just plug right in. I will say that I do like the volume rocker and the power button in the Switch OLED. I think it's really nice. It's a nice little upgrade. I just 
think it's something that's worth mentioning. Now, when it came to the Switch OLED, one of the biggest things and mysteries that we saw was that the dock in and of itself is technically capable of outputting a 4K signal. Now, nothing has been done as far as I know as of 10-10-2022. For all we know, this could be part of the potential future for the Nintendo Switch 2 or a Switch Pro or Super Switch, whatever you want to go ahead and call it. But looking at that, it kind of shows you that there was a little bit of a twist or a turn in the production of the Nintendo Switch OLED. Or like I said, this could be something that could be future-proofing the dock in and of itself for future consoles and handhelds. Of course, with the dock, you do have the ethernet capabilities, which honestly makes things phenomenally better for playing online with other people. And frankly, with the new net code and some of the issues that we've had with NSO and just online games overall for Nintendo, any sort of thing that will give you an edge online will just make things easier, better, and overall a better experience for you. Let's be real, the biggest thing that improved, at least for me, was the kickstand. Honestly, guys, the kickstand was so bad on the original Nintendo Switch that it definitely left a lot to be desired. There were a lot of third-party solutions for fixing this for a lot of the Nintendo Switch fan base out there, but one thing that they improved greatly on was the kickstand. Being able to go ahead and literally pull out the entire thing just felt great. It reminded me a lot of the Surface Pro. For those of you that don't have one, there is like a kickstand that you can go ahead and take out that just feels good and you're able to work with it without having any sort of issues and it just stays there. It just felt right. Now is the $350 asking price still worth it, especially in comparison to the other Switch models that are out there? And I'm talking about the Nintendo Switch regular version as well as the Switch Lite. It depends because at the end of the day, I still feel like the Switch OLED is more of a premium purchase. It's more of a premium experience than anything else. You'll still be able to play the same games on the Switch Lite and the OG Switch. You won't really have that much of a difference aside from the kickstand as well as the screen. If you're in the market to buy a Nintendo Switch and you have the spare $50 USD to buy a new Nintendo Switch, you might as well go for the Switch OLED. I mean, personally, I like having that premium feel and that premium experience. And I think that that extra 50 bucks is worth it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, whether or not a Switch OLED is worth it. And let me know if you have any questions about anything. I'm here to help you guys out with everything. Until next time, guys. Peace.